I'm going to show you how anybody, any regular person, can turn an Airbnb rental into a million dollars. That's right, folks. It's not a get-rich-quick thing, though, right? If you think this is something like, yo, I got an Airbnb on Monday, and on Thursday I got a million dollars. It's not how it works, folks. Real estate is a get-rich-quick game? No. No, it's not. It's a get rich slow game. But if you got some patience, I'm going to show you how to turn that Airbnb rental into a million bucks in 10 years. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry world welcome to the show folks my name is james wise and i am here to help investors like you investors make money in real estate investing i do a lot of stuff here on holton wise tv we've made our bones we've made our big coin we made our name on the lower income stuff uh, but have recently shifted gears uh, I shouldn't say shifted gears. We haven't shifted gears. We've just added a new business line, right? We do a lot of stuff. Low income Section 8 rentals, that's what we do the most of. We do flips. We do wholesaling. We do it all. But now we are also adding a new business line, which is Airbnb investing, some short-term rental property investing in uh, the more high-end neighborhoods, right? So it's not switching gears. It's just adding something on. And today I'm working with a man named Mike. And, Mike, you've actually given me a few questions. And before I teach you how to make a million bucks off of an Airbnb investment. I'm going to go over some of those. And one of those questions kind of has to do uh, with what I was just talking about, how we uh, just recently added this business line. You asked me about uh, my personal strategy, investments I own. What do I do with my short-term rentals? So what I want you to do, Mike, is after you finish this particular episode, click the notes below. I got another video I made where I explained at length exactly where I'm at with personal investments, why Holton Wise decided to move into the Airbnb space in addition to our other stuff, give you the complete rundown. I talked about it for a good 15, 20 minutes, as a matter of fact. So check out that video, and that will answer that question. As far as some of your other questions, you were curious to know what areas of Northeast Ohio are short-term rental friendly. Wow. Unfortunately, that is... Uh, uh, a loaded question that's going to have varying answers uh, that could be correct or incorrect based upon what time you're watching this video, right? Uh, what we have going on in this country, folks, and it's not just the Cleveland area that's experiencing this. It's all over, uh, all over, really. It's a new emerging business model, okay? And regulations in cities and their enforcement uh, of the Airbnb short-term rental model, they're shifting and changing all the time, right? So if you look on our FAC on HoltonWise.com, you know, we've explained to you, hey, we're going to try to provide you uh, as much up-to-date information as we can, but we are not your attorney. Uh, we are uh, not out here on Holton Wise TV giving you legal advice and any information I say today could be incorrect tomorrow. Cities are literally changing this. People are battling these things in court. Uh, so what I can say to you right now is uh, your best bet is to anytime you consider buying an Airbnb property, property you're going to do Airbnb rentals, uh, before you enter into a contract to buy one, you should consult your attorney and have him consult the building department of that particular municipality. Now, Things may or may not change, though, by the time um, you actually go to closing. Like, I know Seven Hills, a suburb in Ohio, for a while, Airbnb was fine. But then they put a moratorium on it so they could figure out how they wanted to enforce it. And then that expired, and they didn't know what they wanted to do, and it's kind of in limbo, right? What I will say is Cleveland, the actual city of Cleveland, uh, is one that seems to be the most furthest along, okay? They've actually already gone through, regulated this out, and decided to charge a tax on it. So I would say Cleveland is fairly uh, Airbnb-friendly, and then, of course, other touristy areas. But 
you know, to give you anything more concrete than that, it's just not possible, man. There's too much things in flux. So we're going to have to to have you speak to building departments, speak to your uh, legal counsel, because, again, there's just so much flux right now. And then, of course, folks, check out our FAQ, and we'll try to give you as much info as we can. But, you know, you can't pin down a concrete answer in this uh, day and age at this point in time, right? And you asked me if I'm aware, like, what types of buildings uh, are, are best for – these short-term rentals well i think single family houses are the best single family houses that are not part of an hoa or single family houses that you've already read through all the bylaws of the hoa and they don't have any restrictions right what you want to avoid is things with an hoa right you got you want to avoid those uh or at the very least you need to read through them most hoas that i've read through 20, 30, 40, 50 pages, but somewhere in there there's some type of short-term rental restriction and you can't really fight that it's a tough battle. So uh, if there is no HOA, you're already doing better. If there is an HOA, make sure you read through the HOA before you try to put a short-term tenant in there, right? Because that HOA is going to control it, right? Uh, a couple other questions you went through. Will Holton Wise uh, go all the way out to Huron and Sandusky? Uh, Airbnb is, again, a newer business line for us. But, yes, we do have plans to expand out that far because uh, we are really big into the islands and all of the good vacations that happen there. Huge demand in the summer. I know one of your concerns is your demand is going to go down in the winter. And, yeah, if you're going to invest in Airbnb properties in Northeast Ohio, yes, you're absolutely going to have a much lower demand in the winter than you will in the summer, especially when your draw is Kelly's Island, Putin Bay, Cedar Point, right? However, we're seeing uh, direct data from various sources, including Airbnb, saying it should all average out to roughly 40% vacancy, right? So it's going to be much higher in the winter. Uh, your vacancy will be much higher in the winter. Your occupancy will be much higher in the summer, but it should all fizzle out, even out to around 60% occupied for the entire year. With all of that said, I, as just mentioned, am big in the areas of the islands, and I have a property in Vermilion that I want to talk to you about. This property right there, Cedar Point, Sandusky, uh, Putin Bay, Kelly's Island, Catawba, all that good stuff, and it's also halfway uh, on the other side, halfway on the other side is Cleveland, right? So on the west, you got all that good jazz, about the same distance. On the east, you have Cleveland, the Rock Hall, all that good stuff. So we're going to talk about this property, why I think it's going to be nice, and how it's going to make you a million dollars in 10 years. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Now, we're going to make a million bucks. Go make a million bucks off of this property, folks. We ain't going to make a million bucks off of this property tomorrow. We ain't going to make a million bucks off of it in six months, okay? But this property could put us well on our way to making a million dollars over a 10-year period, okay? Now, first things first, let's talk about the address. 341 Portland Drive, Vermilion, 44089. Been on the market a little over two months, two and a half months. Price, $314,999, right? It's only $114.55, okay? Built in 1970. It's a big house. Six beds, four baths. Let's see what the listing agent and the seller had to say. Welcome home to this stunning custom-built colonial side entry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You haven't seen the pictures yet. I will show them to you, but I just think it's hilarious that they say things like stunning. It, it is, it's a nice area. We're going to do some nice stuff to it. It's more or less a nice house, but it's definitely not stunning, right? It's built in the 70s, and like a lot of it still looks like it's in the 70s. But hey, their job as a listing agent is to push the property, make you think it's the best thing since sliced bread, right? They work for the seller. Well, guess what, folks? I don't work for the seller. I work for you, and I'm going to cut it to you straight, right? So I don't pull 
uh, any punches when I analyze these properties, right? That's what you're paying me for, right? So anyway, welcome home to this stunning custom-built colonial with a side entry, two-and-a-half car garage situated on a 160-foot double-wide lot right in the heart of Vermillion. The property is steps from a private neighborhood beach on Lake Erie. Ding, 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 ding. That's good for vacation rentals, folks. And the home offers lake views. Money. Can you say money? Yeah, that's what we're buying. We ain't buying anything stunning. We're buying a location, not necessarily the inside of a house, right? Uh, lake views from most of the rooms. Recent updates include uh, roof 2018, furnace 2018, AC 2017. Now, a roof's going to last you 30 years. Furnace should last you 30 years. AC should last you 30 years. So these are things you don't got to worry about, right? We have well made our million bones well before that. We probably won't even own this property at that point in time, you know? The big ticket items have been completed. The gourmet eating kitchen features solid wood oak cabinetry, a new gas stove, and Corian countertops. The spacious family room has a wood-burning fireplace, new flooring, and sliding glass door leading to a, a patio, completing the first floor as a formal living room and dining room and guest bathroom. Upstairs is the owner suite and five bedrooms. Five bedrooms, folks. You know what that means? We're going to have a bunch of guests. We're going to max out the amount of guests we can achieve on these short-term rental property platforms. And what that means is more money. All right? More money. Completing the first floor. I already read that. Where the hell am I? Here I am. Think of all the possibilities you can have with the space, such as an office, craft room, playroom, music room. Two additional full bathrooms are on this level. Basement is partially finished, but... Plenty of room for all your entertaining needs. A picturesque and park-like backyard includes several fruit trees, grapevines, vegetable garden, a gazebo overlooking wonderful green space with amazing views of the lake. This home is close to the downtown area of Vermillion, Cedar Point, wonderful parks and beaches. Don't miss out on this gem. This person also forgot to write Kelly's Island and put in bay because that's what we're really here for, right? Cedar Point, Kelly's Island, put in bay Lake Erie. That's why we like Vermillion. That's why we like Vermillion for short-term rentals, okay? This property... Again, I made fun of the listing agent a little bit. It's not a bad house, but, like, you know, it's from the 70s, right? Uh, so it's not like people are buying it for, like, the luxury awesomeness of the home, right? There's nothing special there. This is why you're buying the some bitch, right? Look at this. Private freaking beach on Lake Erie. You just go, like, that way, and you're at the freaking islands. You go that way. You're at freaking Cedar Point. You go this way. You're downtown Cleveland, right? Kelly's Island, Putin Bay, Cedar Point, the Rock Hall. Uh, the Guardians, the Racino, the Casino. Uh, what other teams? The Cavs, the Browns. I think there's a WNBA team, and I think there might even be like a soccer team. I don't know, right? There's a lot of friggin' stuff, though, right? But mainly, your big draw here is people wanting to vacation by the lake, right? So you got this little backyard area, and then pow, you got the little neighborhood private beach, okay? As far as inside the house, we're going to pack people in there, right? Now, I got a budget in here. I budgeted thirty grand uh, for renovations and forty grand for furnishings. Right, forty thousand dollars sounds like a lot of money uh, for furnishing, but when you do this thing from top to bottom, it's actually not. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do for you right here is I'm going to pop this bad boy up on the screen. I have a recent uh, furnishing bid from another large home like this that we did, right? So when you hear that number, you're like, oh, I got $40,000. That's so much. But, guys, you got to just think of all the actual things you need. So as you can see on the screen, I have included everything for you along with the exact itemized price. And that is the price for Holton Wise, not to just get it right it's that's for everything right so like we're talking about a blender that's the price of us actually putting that blender set up plugged in ready to rock and roll on the countertop right those tvs mounting them on the wall like these tvs although i lied these tvs are actually mounted from the ceiling but you get what i'm saying right like we will have it all set up mounted on the tv hooked up to wi-fi ready to rock and roll so our guests can come in and hook up their Hulu, just punch in their Hulu password, their Netflix password, whatevs, man. I've been watching IMDB lately. Ooh, you man, I like that, man. I like that quite a bit. I watched Midway on there the other day. Damn, that was a good movie. Nothing to do with what we're talking about, but just one of the new stream platforms that I just recently heard about, and I like it quite a bit. But anyway, 
So that's the exact itemized pricing, right? That's about what we'll be paying for a house like this, right? It shows you literally everything. We leave no stone unturned, right? Down to the freaking salt and pepper shakers, folks. We got this stuff covered, right? So in there, all those furnishings should run you around 40 Gs, okay? And as you see, we got some premium options in there. It's up to you if you want to do that kind of stuff. Now, 30 Gs separate from that, we got to update this house. Now, I don't want to go crazy balls to the wall here, right? You guys have heard me on the show uh, present to you guys some, like, brand new construction homes that the interior of the home is a much bigger draw than this home, right? This particular home, it's built in the 70s and it's very, very big and the location is killing it, right? So I don't think we need to try to reinvent the wheel and spend 150000 inside this house, right? But we do need to update it a little bit, right? Like this kitchen, you know, we could work with this, but we just got to like paint it, bring it out of the 70s, right? So I got a modest 30K budget in there, but that's not going to be like gutting anything, right? Like the kitchen isn't the worst thing. The floors are okay. We just need to do some paint. But like when we get to the bathrooms and stuff or like just throughout the house, like it just looks like it's from the 70s, right? Like obviously this person's like grandma E type furniture won't be there. Uh, and like we'll get rid of this light fixture and put a more modern one. Although, I don't know, I swear that, I think that is, like, literally, like, a knight, like a knight's armor. If that is what that is, we should try to get that to stay, because that's dope. But anyway, uh, more or less, you know, we're going to get the grandma vibe out of there, repaint everything, like, one uh, neutral color, and we're going to spend the bulk of the money in the bathrooms, right? Like, this bathroom is literally straight from the 70s, right? Like, when we're doing uh, the pictures on the short-term rental websites and all that jazz, right, like, we can't present them little old lady house, right? We can't present them this bathroom with the gold trim and the wood toilet seat, right? Like, who's going to want to pay a bunch of money uh, for that? Like, we're going to play up, of course, the location, but, you know, we need to, to go in the middle here, right? So we're not doing, like, the most luxury rental here. It's a lot of, like, little cosmetic stuff, but we got to get it out of the 70s, right? So have I uh, done nicer homes and gotten a higher monthly rent, nightly rent, rather, uh, than this one. Yes, but as far as location goes, this is it right here, folks. This is where it's at, right? So I've done homes uh, with what I would consider to be a less cool location that have gotten a higher nightly rent. Uh, likewise, I've done homes uh, with a much nicer interior home uh, and gotten, like, less nightly rent, right? So we're kind of going to be in the middle, right? We're not providing, like, the most badass actual uh, design-looking home out there because, again, we could spend, like, 150000 if you want to do that. I don't think we need to. So I think we keep the budget low, thirty k, and I think we should be able to get about 400 a night, right? Because we're going to be carried by two things, carried by that location with the close proximity to all the good stuff, right? Put in Bay, dude, that's like friggin' Mardi Gras for people who are not familiar with what Put in Bay is. It's like goddamn Mardi Gras every fucking day up there. Well, in the summer, not the winter. Kelly's Island, more of a family-friendly island, uh, but again, huge scene. Catawba, bunch of boaters. Uh, we got Cedar Point, okay? Cedar Point, one of the biggest amusement parks in the country. And then, of course, you have all the stuff downtown, right? So this is like a very in-high-demand spot, right? If you're going to be vacationing in Northeast Ohio, this is like a perfect locale, right? So I believe we should average 400 bucks after it all shakes out. But you're not getting 12400 a month, folks, because that would be 100% occupancy. That's insane. It's not going to work that way, right? We're going to have a much higher demand in the summer, much lower in the winter. I anticipate all of it shaking out to be around a 60 to 62% occupancy, right? So after you factor in all of that vacancy along with all of the fees, the taxes, and then you paying Holton Wise to handle the entire shebang for you, right? Managing this thing, doing everything. Like I said, we break it down as much for you as can be. We get it right down to the freaking salt shakers, man. The salt and pepper shakers, right? I believe you should be kicking off a true profit of approximately 4860 bucks a month or 58331 Now, I told you I was going to show you how to make a million bucks, and I'm going to do that, right? So the property... Price, they have it. What was it again? It was high. All right, they have it at three fourteen ninety nine. Okay, three hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine. I believe I can negotiate that down for two ninety. I think I can get you guys down twenty five k. Pick it up for two ninety. 
Now, in addition to the 290, I talked about $30,000 of reno, $40,000 of furnishing. So we're all in on this investment at 360 grand. But here's the cool thing, folks. You only need to put down 25%. We'll get a lender to kick in 217,500 for the home. So you're going to kick in 72.5 for your down payment, and then you're going to kick in 40 for the furnishings, 30 for the reno. That's 70k for that. If you want to pay for that, uh, with a credit card, you absolutely can to keep your actual pure out-of-pocket cost at 72. But I don't know about you. I don't think paying 25% APR on 70 grand is a good financial investment, right? So eventually you're going to want to pay that off cash. Maybe you do 12 months, same as cash, 0% uh, financing, and then use the cash flow after paying off your actual mortgage to pay off your credit card. That would be quite nice. That would project out a much higher cash-on-cash cash return than what I'm doing. But I'm just going to keep it simple here, and let's just say you paid it all cash. So you're 142 and a half up front, right? After you pay off your loan, that's going to kick off about 47000 right? That's a 33.2% projected cash-on-cash cash return, right? So where do we go from here, okay? Forty-seven grand. You invest one hundred and forty grand. You should be kicking off an average of forty-seven grand. Okay, we're gonna call that fifty grand. Why? Because we're friends. What is three thousand dollars among friends, right? So you kick off fifty grand a year from an investment like this. All you need to do is put together two investments like this. Why can't you put together two of these, folks? I already broke it down where you only need truly seventy grand out of your pocket. And you're going to be making 47 of that back, essentially, right? So you put together two of these. That will be $100,000 a year. All you got to do is get two little houses like this, hundred grand a year. And in 10 years, you will have made $1 million. Now, imagine if you did this four times. That's $2 million in 10 years. How about you do it eight times, folks? You do it eight times. That is, uh, what is that? Oh, that's uh, four million bucks, right? Four million bucks in eight years. And guess what? You get 10 mortgages, right? So instead of doing it uh, eight times, why don't you add another two on there? Make yourself a cool uh, 10 million bucks. Wait, did I screw up my math? Two is a million, four is two million. Eight is four million. I'm sorry. Ten would be five million. My bad. I threw an extra five million on top there. Five million bucks, right? You do it ten times, you can be making five million bucks in ten years. And the reason I chose ten, like why? Okay, great, man. I can make five million dollars. Do it ten times. Why not do it a hundred times? I'll make fifty million dollars. Well, that would be crazy. We don't want to say that. Why? Because financing, right? Financing. The whole investment, the actual true cost of the investment, is a lot, right? It's friggin' uh, three hundred and <coughs> three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Okay, three hundred and sixty thousand dollars is the true cost of the investment, but you only have to put up seventy two and a half because we get a lender to kick in the rest. So why would I stop it at ten instead of saying a hundred? Because you get ten of those residential mortgages, folks. After ten, you could no longer get these awesome 30-year mortgages where you only put down 25%. From there, you have to move on to the commercial investment loan st uh, space. And when you're in the commercial loan space, they don't want to see you do single-family Airbnb properties, right? So unless you're going to start converting to cash, I think it's best to assume we're going to stick to a portfolio of between 1 in 10 properties, which should cap us out at approximately Five milli over 10 years or more practically for the beginners out there who don't have all that down payment money just yet. Let's set our sights on making a million bucks in our first decade in the business. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.